Rev up your engine! There's an interesting one that's uh, trying to rip off all your consumers there. Turns out the auto industry has spent more than $25 million lobbying against a bill in Massachusetts that's called the right to repair ballot that they're voting on. is so that individuals and independent mechanics like myself can get the information wirelessly from the vehicles, the new vehicles to work on. The auto industry has spent 25 million bucks trying to defeat this law because they don't want you or independent mechanics to get this data. They're trying to say, we made it, so it's our software. We don't need to share it with anybody. You know, who? What about your hoopa? You don't see that in their car ads where they're smiling by the car. Da, da, da. They don't sign the back. Well, we're going to try to make it so we're the only people that can fix them, and we really rip you off because nobody else has the information to repair them. The whole thing is about people getting the data wirelessly to be able to work on modern cars. Now, all the cars so far, at least, they got an OBD port so you can plug in a scanner, right? Well, they want to make it so that they won't even have the port anymore, and you're going to have to interface wirelessly, and you're not going to be able to do that because they'll put some kind of a key on it so that you can't access the information wirelessly unless you have their code key, and they're only going to give that to their own mechanics at the dealerships. And like I say, so far, they spent $25 million trying to defeat the law that says everybody should be able to get this information. The more people know about it, the better. That's why I'm talking about it. If in your area they try to make a bill like that, tell your politicians that's BS. You're trying to rip the public off. They'll slide these things in if you don't know about it. But if you find about it, like this bill, you definitely want to vote yes for the bill, that they're able to get this information. Don't be fooled by some political ad that says, oh, this is good for your safety. So that's what the auto industry is trying to say. Well, we're going to code all this stuff because then people can't hack in and steal your cars. I mean, come on now. These bumbleheads that they have in the auto industry, if they think that they can fool hackers, if they came out with something, I bet you within a day the hacker could hack right into that system if they wanted to. These computer guys are geniuses, the hackers. And if they make some kind of a system that's supposed to block everybody else, but the dealer mechanics can get it, huh, they'll go outside the dealer mechanics. You can't stop those guys. It's, it's a kind of a scam the auto industry is trying to say, well, we're going to make it safer for you. But on the other hand, they're going to make it safer for them to rip you off fixing your car because nobody else can get the information. Sad. I mean, uh, a couple years ago, Chrysler did it with all their new cars that a regular scan tool won't interface with them, uh, and you got to have a special scan tool to do it. Now, I'm a professional mechanic, so I got the special thing, and since I've been doing it so long, it only cost me 50 bucks a year extra. I had to join this website, and they handle so that you can interface with your fancy scan tools. Now, you got to have this fancy scan tool, too. The scan tool that I'm interfacing with it is a $3,500 scan tool. So, there's $3,500 for the tool, 50 bucks a year to join this thing so that they say, yes, you're legitimate mechanic, and la, 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 you you, know, you don't want the government getting involved and get your car fixed, let me tell you. I can see that just another layer of bureaucracy taking their cut, and then the dealers saying, oh, we, we by law, we're the only people who can work on your cars. You don't want that. You ever see those laws in your area where they say there's a right to repair bill? Vote for it so everybody can get the information so you can get better car repair at a lower price and not have to go to one place where they got you by the short and curlies can charge you whatever they want. Here's some interesting news. You know how these corporations get tax breaks and stuff for having businesses. Well, it turns out that Ohio is requiring General Motors to refund tax credits and invest in the Lordstown plant in Ohio, the new one that they're building. They closed the plant in Northeast Ohio, so they want them to put money in. And they also want a refund of $28 million in tax credits that they gave, saying, oh, well, we we'll are get this tax credit. We're going to keep jobs here forever. And then they moved the jobs away. GM closed their Lordstown, Ohio plant March 2019 and it lost 4,000 jobs, $60.3 million tax credit. And they said that they're going to keep those jobs there, 3,700 of them, until 2028. Well, they shut the plant down, 2019, so they reneged on that deal. That they're investing $71 million in two Ohio plants, and that's going to retain 240 jobs. Ha! 
They had 4,000 of them that they shot down, and now they're saying, well, we invested 71 million for, and it's retaining 240 jobs. Sounds like something's fishy going on here. They get all these deals, and they renege on them and leave on them. Who knows what the end result will be? They're always claiming they're going to do one thing, and then they do another. They get all these tax credits, and then they just run up and leave. I find it interesting that Ohio sued them for that, and they want their money back. Good luck getting money from GM. That's all I got to say. You know, they'll do like that other do. Well, we put 71 million in here, and it's holding 240 jobs. Well, they lose 4,000 jobs. It's like they're rearranging the deck while the ship is sinking. And now, of course, they say they're going to make electric batteries, yada, yada, yada. Who knows what's actually going to happen? They couldn't even keep the promise of having 4,000 jobs in Ohio building cars. Who knows where they're going to make electric batteries, and if they'll even sell them and if they'll even be competitive that's way out in the future all I know is that presently they've screwed the people over they lost 4,000 jobs and now they claim they're spending 71 million to retain 240 jobs phew boy we're getting more and more in the stratosphere of BS here well here's an interesting tidbit it turns out that Ford has cut the prices of their Mustang Mach-E the first all-electric car that they've built from the ground up by up to $3,000 the cheaper ones are knocking a thousand bucks off. The more expensive one, they're knocking three off. Now, that of course is their suggested list. From what I find, when they make a new vehicle and using the name Mustang, of course, you know, really, if you think about it, it's kind of a ripoff because it has nothing to do with Mustang. It's an electric vehicle SUV. It's not a sports car with a gasoline engine, but whatever. If they're popular, I guarantee you when they do start actually selling them to people, which they haven't yet, there's none on the showroom floors, that the dealers will do the usual mark them up a ton because they're popular and they can sell them all so they'll just keep raising and jacking up what they want to get for them I see that all the time with new vehicles I saw it with Supra I see it with lots of vehicles there's only a certain amount of them out there and if they get real popular they start charging more for them just like the Corvette the mid-engine Corvette I've had a few customers buy them and they have this list price of 60000 or whatever. They all paid well over $75,000 for the car. This list price stuff is a lot of nonsense half the time when it comes with a new vehicle like that. But it's kind of interesting that they've cut the price. That's, that's kind of say something. You got to understand these things. Now, they're all made in Mexico. They're made entirely in Mexico. Who knows what kind of quality is going to come out of Mexico. But I find it kind of odd that they're cutting the price of them now. Uh, there must be some reason behind that. They're not going to tell us, of course. Now, the cheapest one is still forty. $2,485. So they're not giving these things away. And it's like half a house. <laughs> And Ford says that they're doing it to become competitive with everybody here. But, I mean, you can't even talk about being competitive yet. This is the first all-electric vehicle they've made. We don't even know how they're going to work. What kind of competition is it going to be? We're not going to know until they're out in the street and people have driven around for a year or two or three and see how the things hauled up. You know, They're basically competing against the Tesla Model Y. But, then again, you know, that's been out a while. It's, people are driving around. They get some kind of feedback here. Nobody knows. You can't talk about competition until they're out there and people are actually driving them around. Asian Boys says, Scotty, what's the worst thing to expect if we combine three-cylinder engine with a turbocharger and GDI? Malaysian car manufacturer Proton makes an SUV called X50 using a turbocharged three-cylinder engine and GDI. Yes, not a smart idea if you want long life. Three-cylinder engines have always had one downfall in that they didn't put out enough power. You put on GDI and a turbocharger, you can get power, you know, you can get a lot of horsepower, but it's not going to last. The smaller the engine, the more you stress it. Turbochargers, which ram more air in, and GDI, which shoot the gasoline at higher pressures, increase the pressure inside the engine. It's going to wear out faster. It's only common sense. And it's bad enough now they got these little bitty four-cylinder engines they're doing it through. I've seen 1.1 liter four-cylinder engines with turbochargers and GDI. But you go to three-cylinder, you're straining that smaller engine even more. Not such a smart idea. Now you do get the power and everything. And of course, think about it. Three cylinders are cheaper to make than four. It's just cheaper to make them. And that's why they're doing it. They probably will never go to two and one because those have such a small amount of power that nobody's going to accept them. Other than the French with their Citroen 2CV, and I mean, they haven't made that for decades. Two little two-cylinders hardly could get out of their own way. The smaller the cylinders, 
the less the power, the more the strain on the engine to try to get the same horsepower. Even a bigger four-cylinder engine that's turbocharged than GDI. They're using the Ford uh, Explorers, and even the, the cops are using them in their chase vehicles here in Houston. I asked the police, I said, what do you think of those? They said, we think they're terrible. They break all the time. They say, we have old Crown Victoria police cars, and they hardly ever break. They're still going. But these new ones, no. Four-cylinder engine turbocharged, no. They don't like them because they're breaking all the time. Put it down to three cylinders, you're going to have more problems. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.